The following reenactment is taken from an actual case. The deposition dialogue is taken directly from the public record. Everything else is commentary. Have you spoken to Mr. Patterson about the subpoena he received for documents? He mentioned it to me. He laughed at you. What did he say? He thought you were a joke. But yeah, sometimes lawyers will come to the judge and say, look, I think I'm going to have a problem with this, or in the midst of the of the examination when the problems are occurring, they'll come and ask the judge to do something. I think the first thing that I thought of um, was that he must have been terrified of that judge. Uh, he did not want to go in front of that judge. That, of course, I don't know this for sure, but that was my, and, I, and I've dealt with lawyers who are really afraid of certain judges. Um, and I know it may not be any judge, but particular judges can inflict the fear of God in people. And I've seen that firsthand. Um, and so my sense from my experience in the courtroom was for whatever reason he was terrified of getting in front of that judge. Maybe he didn't have a lot of courtroom, actual courtroom experience. Maybe he's just used to deposing people. I mean, um, but he was, it, you have to have a serious desire to avoid laying eyes on that judge to stay in that for 12 hours, especially over the course of two separate sessions where you have had to have had some time to regroup and talk to yourself, okay, the last time I had this guy in here, he was this, he did this. Every time I asked these questions, this was the response. How am I gonna shift my tactics here to make this worth anybody's time? Why would I try again, first of all? Why try again? And second of all, what am I gonna do differently to try to make some progress here? And it was very clear that absolutely no, it didn't appear that any tactics had changed at all. He threw himself back in the lion's den and just got beat up by the guy again. And so um, my sense is he was terrified, maybe terrified to go in front of the judge. Maybe he's just a super passive guy. Maybe he just gets stunned and doesn't know how to react when somebody is aggressive. I mean, I have no idea. It could be a million things because I don't personally know him, but it's the one thing that I did think of was that judge fear. When lawyers don't control their client or don't control their witnesses or the witness they're questioning in court in a couple of ways. Sometimes they don't have the witness speak loudly enough so everyone can hear it. It's very common for lawyers to talk over witnesses and more common for witnesses to talk over lawyers. That is, start answering the question before the question is finished. That's bad because it's hard for the jury and the judge to understand it. The court reporter can't get it done. So quite often I will say to lawyers, either at the bench or uh, in a, in a, at least in a non-jury trial, I'll say, you know, you, you have to control this witness, be sure the witness speaks up, be sure the witness doesn't talk until you're done and so forth. It varies from lawyer to lawyer and it varies from area of law to area of law. like. Family law, you can forget it, because everybody wants to go out and hire the nastiest, rottenest lawyer they can find. Uh, when you get into a probate practice, everybody wants to be kind of quiet and respectful. I mean, there are consequences to this. Are, are, is everything going to be in front of this judge? Okay, the one who has to deal with this guy screaming, saying the Effenheimer every three seconds? It, what are the repercussions? What are the repercussions of letting him run like this? And getting the, the lawyers on the other side so entrenched in their dislike for this guy that they're gonna stop at nothing to punish him for embarrassing them in that way. So those are the kind of repercussions that I see. But in addition, he could have helped himself potentially and clarified some issues and taken the heat out of some of the suspicions of the people who were deposing him. If he, you have to assume that every single suspicion may or may not be true. And the things they're questioning about, while true, a fishing expedition, he could have dismissed some of the things and made the case a little bit easier to manage on his end. Um, but he had no opportunity to do any of that because he couldn't shut up and nobody stopped him and his lawyer didn't say, you're not helping yourself here, you're hurting yourself on many levels. This is not good for your case. So suck it up and answer the questions or we're gonna end this and we're gonna have to deal with the judge and I don't think you wanna do that. It comes down to the issue of client control. And if I can't control a client, I'm not going to represent the client. I think if a lawyer pulled rank a lawyer who had previously aligned with him, he believed his lawyer was a decent lawyer, he's the greatest, smartest legal mind of all time, so he would only pick the greatest, smartest lawyer of all time, who was probably not as expensive as others. And so he 
could have potentially made some ground, ground with that. He could have. If he couldn't, then there was, what was he doing in there in the, in the first? What else did he say? That you're a joke. Did he say he had documents responsive to the subpoena? He had no documents. He doesn't discuss things with me. He just said that you're a joke. That's what he said? Yes. So he shares your opinion on these things as well? Yes. You're a joke. Is it just a coincidence that Mr. Patterson was involved as a trustee in both of these trusts? It is no coincidence that I'm a genius at what I do. I obey the law. You practice the law. I live the law. You serve the law. I abide by the law and enforce the law to the full extent that the law allows. The only difference between you and me is that I have a pair of balls and you don't. No, I, I, I did not chuckle. No. I mean, I smiled at some point. Now, the only difference between the average person and me is that I have a pair of balls and they don't. You think that's funny? I'm not the one chasing 15 million, ass wipe. I may have snickered, but no, nope, I did not chuckle. I mean, that's disrespectful. I mean, you just, you just don't do that.